Jefferson Swag from Flash Game University at flashgameu.com. And today I want to talk about the display list and levels. And a lot of ActionScript programmers get this confused, especially if you were programming in ActionScript before where it was done completely differently. So in ActionScript 3, you have a display list. This is a simple list of objects on the screen. For instance, let's take a look at this. We've got three items on the stage here. And they're basically the same library item, but what I've done is I've tinted each one differently. And I've named it. Green next and blue last. So the display list is really red, green, blue. Or red circle, green, blue, blue, green circle. So we can go and in different ways. Say if we wanted to bring the green circle to the front. The way we would do that is we would write an action script that would basically bring it to the front. But let's start with add child and remove child. Add child, add something to the display list, and remove child, remove something from it. So for instance, remove child. And if we do green circle and we run or test, we get this. Simply the green circle has been removed from the display list. Now, here's the interesting thing is you want to bring the green circle to the front. So what you could do at this point is you could go ahead and do add child. So basically removing it and then adding it back in and it ends up in front of everything else at the end of the display list. Now we don't need the remove child. It turns out if you use add child just by itself and it's already in the display list it simply adds it to the front of the display list. There we go. Now suppose we wanted to move green all the way to the back. The way to do that is uh, to set the child index. And we set the child index of green circle to zero, putting it the very first one on the display list. So being the first to be drawn, meaning it will be in the back. And there we go. So now we've gone ahead and shown how to move something to the front and how to move something to the back. Now, if you want to actually figure out what at a certain level on the display list, and your program may need to know this, you can use the get child at. So for instance, we get child at display list area 0. We see that it's object circle. That's not very useful so what we're going to do is put dot name to get that property. And it's the red circle. We want to find out what's at 1. Green circle. And of course 2 would be blue circle. Of course it's a 0 based list so 0, 1, 2. Um, and now we can also go ahead and remove a child at a specific spot. So if we don't know the name of it but say we want to remove the middle child here. Um, remove child at 1. And there we go. It's removed green for us. Now we can also swap children. So forgetting about exactly where things are in the list, we can swap, say, child 1 and 2, which should swap the green and blue. And it doesn't because we need to use the actual names. Sorry. There we go. We've swapped. Now there's also swap children at which would have done what we were trying to do before. Swap position 1 and 2. So there's how to swap them. There's how to add it to the beginning. You can of course set child index anywhere you want. You can also use commands like add child at to add something there um, to a specific position. So set child index would change the position of something but adding add child at will actually add that child maybe that's not in the display list at all into a certain position in the display list. So there's a complete set of commands for manipulating how things are ordered when drawn on the screen. Now you can also do manipulation in terms of putting things in different containers. So everything now is at the root movie clip level. That's why we were able to do things like saying add child and not actually have something before it. For instance we could have said this add child and done it this way and put like the red circle in front. And it knows this is the same thing as if we had nothing there. But what if we wanted to group children together? So one of the things we can do is we can create a new display list. And we can do this like so. So you can say var um, and we can say container. 
container one, and let's make it a sprite. There are various types of display objects. There are sprites, movie clips, for instance. Sprite will work fine since we're not going to have any kind of animation, any kind of frames in this. So we're going to create a uh, new sprite. And then what we're going to do is say, okay, let's add the red circle to container one. Now watch what's going to happen. The red circle is going to disappear. Uh, there's an error. Uh, forgot the equal sign. There we go. It disappears. Why did it disappear? Because we, re by adding red circle to container one, removed it from the main level movie clip. And container one is not available anywhere. It's not being shown on the screen. So we need to add container one to the main movie. So we're going to do that by using add child. There we go. So now we've actually removed red, put it into container one, and then put container one on top of everything else. So we can actually do something in a group here. We can actually copy and paste this and we're adding going to add the red circle first, the green circle second to container one, then add container one, which would put it in front of blue. So what we have here is blue is in the back actually, and it's still there on the main stage level. And then red and green are put in container one, which is then placed on top there. So we can reverse these. So we can add green circle first to the container one, then red circle second, which will put it on top of green, and then put both of those as container one on top of blue. And there we go. So that's a great way to be able to manipulate objects completely. Like for instance, if we wanted to do uh, container one and X um, and add, say, 50 pixels to it, it will move both red and green because they're both inside container one. There we go. So that's a quick way to look at all of the different ways that you can manipulate the display list. Um, it's actually much simpler in ActionScript 3, but as I said, it is a bit troublesome for people that are used to ActionScript 1 and 2 where it's done in a very different way and in actually a much more confusing way. Display list is easy in ActionScript 3. So hopefully this will help you in your game development. Uh, you can check out more video tutorials and I'll put uh, this example file at FlashGameU.com. Until next time, this is Gary. Thanks.